I've made the trip up into the Central Highlands countless times. The drive up from the lowlands, no matter which route you take, is breathtaking. One of the most noticeable things is the change of landscape, from temperate rainforests and stands of old eucalypts into the stark landscape of the highlands. The 19 Lagoons is an expansive area of lakes, nearly all of which hold a healthy population of brown trout. Some of the most accessible include Lake Botsford, Lake Kay and Rocky Lagoon. Today I'm going to be using a dropper length that's a little bit shorter than usual. Seeing as though this lake is fairly shallow, the fish can respond better sometimes if it's hanging mid-water column rather than sinking and actually sitting on the bottom. Oh, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Came back for the nymph. Walking across this shoreline here while the sun was out, thought I'd try and spot one in the shallows here. And I thought he'd spooked, but then I recast out to the left here and the fish just kind of moseyed on back around and then ended up taking the nymph, which I wasn't expecting. So it took me by surprise, but awesome to get a fish on the board. So when the sun's out like this, I want to make the most of that and try and Polaroid with the sun behind me to try and spot either flashes of silver or a shadow or maybe something golden against the silt and that'll give away the fish's position. So I was just prospecting this shore here and I did a short cast out into the middle and I just took my eye off the fly to look for a fish up ahead. The only reason I set the hook was because I heard the gulp of the fish taking the dry fly. So what got me into fly fishing originally was a bunch of old fishing books on our bookshelf at home and they originally belonged to my great grandfather but my dad inherited them and I just found them one day. The romantic nature of the writing and the storytelling in those books along with the practical knowledge that I learnt from them really captured my imagination and helped me on my fly fishing journey. At the moment I'm looking for something to give away the position of the fish so it could be a little boil at the surface or a flash of a tail or a bow wave even, a fish chasing a frog in the shallows. Back 
back along that shore there, I'd spooked one fish already sitting right in close. And so I slowed down and was looking along this shoreline here and spotted this guy right in close. And so I slapped the fur fly down and he charged over and ate it. And we're coming after you. And we're coming after you. And we're coming after you. I don't know what started the flies on my hat, but I've got special memories connected to both of them. One of them is from my first memorable big fish caught in the Western Lakes. And the other one is actually the fly that my wife caught her first fish on. I can't see him. Oh, there he is. If he sees that, come on. Ooh. I think he might have just rejected that. Oh. Looked at it again. I think that's a fish. Oh, there were two fish chasing each other again. Are they? Took the dry. Yes! And we're coming yes! And we're coming this fish came up and took the dry, which is awesome. With conditions like this that aren't, it's not super warm at the moment. So there's not a lot of insect life actually on the surface of the water. Sometimes they just come up and take things on the surface anyway and can't beat that. What makes fishing out here in the 19 Lagoon special to me is without a doubt the sight fishing opportunities. No matter the weather, whether it's sunny, you can Polaroid the fish, and even if it's overcast like this, you can still have visibility right up against the shore, and you can have tailing fish. It's just all about seeing the fish and hunting it, and that's what makes it so special.